to Stereo 3D Productions and this first ever update video for our Vorpex tutorial series. Normally when we discover a new, better setup for a game, we do the entire tutorial over, but for Resident Evil 7 this is not necessary. Most of the original tutorial still applies. This update video will simply show you an extra step we can take in order to improve the field of view without using Vorpex's FOV enhancement feature. Since the setup is still nearly the same, this update video will only contain the two sections of the original tutorial affected by this change. We'll be redoing the original tutorial's manual VR configuration section, and we'll also be redoing the vScore section, and we'll be adding a few notes regarding this new trick I'm going to show. If you haven't watched the original tutorial, I do recommend you set up your game with Vorpex by using those instructions. This very update will simply show you how to modify that configuration to accommodate the field of view trick. There will be a link to the full original tutorial in the description of this video. Remember, if you want to skip to a specific section of any video in this series, I always have a table of contents in the description with timecode links. Also, if this added step I'm about to demonstrate ever changes and needs to be updated, like any video in this series, if you see the tag outdated between brackets in the title of this video, look for a link to a more recent version of this update at the top of the description. Assuming you've used the original tutorial, you've got your resolution set to either 1280 by 720, 1600 by 900, or 1920 by 1080 depending on preference, the field of view tweaked using the Vorpex built-in feature, and you're already getting pretty good results for the game. Before starting your game this time, Go ahead and download a tool called RE7 FOV Trainer, made by a user named Civil Wolf in the widescreen gaming forum. This tool is specifically written for the sole purpose of forcing different fields of view in Resident Evil 7. Basically, it's the main reason why this update even exists in the first place. There's going to be a link in the description to download this little helpful application and side note, I'll also post a link to the forum thread where I found this download link. The application is free and does not need an installation, so just go ahead and run the exe file before we do anything else. If you see the RE7 FOV Trainer window opened, you're good to go. Now go ahead and start your runtimes, either SteamVR or Oculus Home, then Vorpex, and finally launch Resident Evil 7. Remember, as we showed in the original tutorial, don't forget to go by the graphics settings and reduce resolution scale to 1.1 if you're running at 1920 by 1080. 1.3 will be hard for your system to handle with any level of hardware. This isn't a change to my original tutorial, but rather a recommendation, by the way. Having played more, I've come to find that running at 1600 by 900 with a resolution scale of 1.3 looks nearly as good as 1920 by 1080 yet performs a lot more smoothly across big and small sections of the game. 1080p remains an option but I highly suggest just using 1600 by 900 at which point you also won't have to worry about resolution scale reverting to 1.3 anymore. From the title menu load your game. Find a safe haven spot so you can open the Vorpex HUD and change settings without being bothered. Open the Vorpex HUD and change the Vorpex values as follows. Under Main Settings, with 3D Reconstruction still on Geometry, set 3D Separation Strength to 0.55. Reduce 3D FOV Enhancement all the way to zero. We will not be needing it anymore. Next, under Image Settings, bring down your HUD scale to 0.45. Then set your HUD depth at 0.6. You'll see the ammo count just well enough this way, and the depth won't go through the weapon model too often. Set Image Zoom all the way up to 0.85. At this point, you can go ahead and turn off the ambiance effect as well, because we won't be needing that either. 
go ahead and hit OK and save. Do a quick Alt Tab out of the game and Alt Tab back in to make sure it's going to run smoothly. As you may recall from the original tutorial, this game seems to hate the Vorpex HUD and opening it slows the game down to a crawl until you Alt Tab out and back into the game. Now, evidently you're wondering how the FOV gets fixed here. Well, assuming you have launched the RE7 FOV Trainer properly, just hit the F6 key on your keyboard and voila! You should hear a voice prompt saying FOV10, confirming you've changed the field of view, and you should now see a correct image in your headset. Ten. You're now ready to play Resident Evil 7 with a greatly, and I mean greatly improved field of view, with absolutely zero culling issues. If you want a really good trick I discovered to help navigate the game's save file menu, go ahead and activate Vorpex's virtual cinema feature under main settings. Do your work in the save file menu and change virtual cinema back to off once you're done. This improved things a lot for me. Keep in mind that the RE7 FOV trainer has an FOV lock key, which is F12, but I don't recommend using it. It's supposed to keep the field of view correct during cutscenes, but right now it makes it skip around like crazy as it appears the game and the FOV trainer enter an arm wrestling match with your field of view value. Now, there is one worry with this method. The first instance of the RE7 FOV Trainer came out in February 2017. When I created the original tutorial for this game, Capcom had already released an update to their game that broke the FOV Trainer. It no longer would adjust your FOV, it would just make the game crash when trying to activate it. The FOV Trainer was finally updated on August 27, 2017, and the latest version works very well. Now Capcom could in the future push a new update that breaks this tool again. And it's never certain whether we'll have to wait for an update to the FOV Trainer, or how long, or if we'll ever get one at all. Most of the information from the original tutorial still applies, and if ever the RE7 FOV Trainer gets broken again, those instructions will still give pretty good VR results without the extra app. Another note I want to add is that the FOV Trainer does have some form of control over the aspect ratio, but it's not a feature that will be useful for VR. At any other aspect ratio than 16.9, it appears I'm still getting the full frame with black bars inside Vorpex and using the aspect ratio adjustment only seems to stretch that image vertically without eliminating the actual black bars. This is definitely a stretch because the result of using this feature is I get a lot more aliasing, and if you've seen the original tutorial, aliasing is already a pretty big problem as it is. This is why I chose to keep things at 16.9. Last, if Civil Wolf ever updates this tool and the instructions don't change, I'll try to keep the download link in the description up to date so you're always going for the latest. Resident Evil 7 now works with a really good field of view, so the V-Score obviously has to be recompiled. The V-Score is a rating system created to evaluate how well a game can be run in Vorpex. The score is on a scale of 100 points and is based on 9 criteria, 8 that yield points and 1 that is a penalty value. The criteria are, first the fixed point values, where a game is given all or nothing for each, acceptable 3D method, proper geometry 3D, and proper head tracking. None of these values change from the original tutorial, in fact you'll recall I praised the fact that the 3D comes with proper shadows, 30, 15, and 15. Second, the variable criteria, where the amount of points can be adjusted for each item. Sufficient field of view. A game really needs some means for forcing the field of view, and because of the various ways we can achieve this, some more effective and some less, this is worth up to 15 points. With the RE7 FOV Trainer, this game gets all the points in this category. The only catch is, if ever the Trainer app is broken by any future updates, we'll sort of be reverting to the old 8 out of 15. 
proper 3D hands and weapons, proper shadows and graphics, and proper user interface and heads-up display, the rest of the variable criteria remain unchanged from the original tutorial. Three for the hands and weapons, five for those amazing shadows, and three again for the heads-up display. Some folks have pointed out the ghost outline around the hand and weapon models, which was my original reason for giving that three out of five. Now believe it or not, with FOV Trainer and the settings I just showed you, you'll get a little bit less ghosting. Not so much as to improve the 3D hands and weapons score, but it's improved enough that the shotgun is way less of an eyesore. Direct VR bonus. Obviously still no direct VR here, so this stays at zero. Penalty. We still have our one point penalty for the inability to disable the terrible artificial anti-aliasing, which comically causes more aliasing, so still minus one here. Resident Evil 7 yields a pretty good V-score of 85. Which, now we're talking. Aside from the issue we have with manual VR games and mouse pitch, which, if you recall, I mentioned that I normally work around that problem using a customized mechanical ball mouse that doesn't respond on the vertical axis, most of this experience can be mistaken for a first-party VR game. Go figure, while recording the gameplay for this update, I actually for a moment forgot this was Vorpex and started criticizing the game's particle systems for using billboarding that works well only on a screen. At which point I recalled I'm kind of uh, running a game meant for screens. 85 is a big deal for a manual VR setup score. This game alone can now be good justification for the whole cost of Vorpex. Now, it needs to be noted that if you're using the alternate setup demonstrated in the original tutorial, that one still has a V-score of 78. If we ever get our beloved FOV trainer broken again, we're effectively reverting to the old score. That's it for this tutorial update. With all the information from the original tutorial, and this extra change using the RE7 FOV trainer to fill your vision with the hell that is this game, you're on your way to seriously shattering your nerves into pieces. Because now we no longer have that ambiance effect glow on our field of view's edges, and we're just absolutely completely trapped in this fucking nightmare that you absolutely almost immediately want to get out of. So, enjoy! Don't get your ass killed now. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.